picking right up here with case 12, we have a 32 year old woman with a questionable history of meningitis and right vision loss. Here we have some images from a non-contrast CT. Let's take a look at those for a second. Of course, you're gonna get more images from an MRI. Here on the left, you have a flare. In the middle, you have a T2. And here you have a gradient on the right. Here we're gonna see some post-contrast images. This is from an axial. Uh, here you see some enhancement, and uh, here you see a sagittal showing uh, the same thing, kind of through the midline. Just a couple more images in the coronal plane. Here you see a T2 with fat saturation a T1 pre-contrast and a T1 post-contrast. So you're getting the orbital apex here. This is gonna be the final images. So your question is, what is your top three considerations in your differential? And your second question is, what SARE marker might lead you towards a diagnosis of sarcoidosis? So the diagnosis here is, uh, one of nodular leptin meningeal enhancement. So you've got to think about some things in a differential. Those things, uh, the number one thing you want to think about is leptin meningeal cancer or carcinomatosis. Things that cause basilar meningitis can also look like this. And this includes unusual infectious agents like tuberculosis and fungi. Sarcoidosis is a major consideration here as well. So this is really a differential case. Uh, this patient happened to have sarcoidosis. A sarcoid, especially in neuroradiology, is a, almost a syphilis-like entity, which can look like a lot of different things. The classic appearance is a basal meningitis, uh, where you have kind of nodular thickening and leptomeninges that are worse in the basal cisterns and at the skull base. You can get parenchymal nodules and perivascular enhancement. Uh, sarcoidomas are sarcoid-related masses that are usually T2 hypo-intense and can have variable enhancement. Uh, the workup for this is to do an LP to get a chest x-ray or chest CT to look for nodules and hyla. Uh, those are frequently seen with sarcoidosis. A serum ACE level can also point you towards sarcoidosis. So here you see this is what classic sarcoidosis looks like. So in this case, these are some post-contrast images showing some enhancement along the surface of the midbrain and pons here. You see this linear enhancement along the folia of the cerebellum, and you see a ton of leptomeningeal enhancement uh, going through all the sulci of the cerebral hemispheres here. A little bit higher in the same patient, you've got a little bit of parenchymal enhancement, some little areas of nodularity, uh, maybe a little nodules over here as well. That's kind of what classic uh, neurosarcoid is going to look like in the brain. Uh, so you see the nodular enhancement there, a little bit of parenchymal nodularity there as well. Now here, this is from our case, you see uh, the degree of enhancement is much, much worse, but you do see the same kind of things. You see the leptomeningeal enhancement here. You see these parenchymal nodules, and they're a little bit dark to intermediate on T2. So you've got the parenchymal nodules. The optic nerves in this case are involved as well. So you see this right optic nerve is very thick and uh, very enhancing, like going all the way to the orbital apex. So this has all the features, but it's a really extreme case. It's one of the worst cases of sarcoidosis that I've ever seen. Uh, your second question was what serum marker leads you towards a diagnosis of sarcoidosis? We already mentioned that, that it's the angiotensin converting enzyme. IgG4 is associated with uh, orbital pseudotumor or orbital inflammatory disease. Aquaporin antibodies are associated with neuromyelitis optica. And antinuclear antibodies are associated with all of the uh, lupus spectrum disorders.